compared to like the 1990s or early 2000s, I think that server-side software um, has come really a long way. If you look at like Apache or IaaS, um, you know, there's there, there is still vulnerabilities that get released, and, and but but they're much less than what they used to be. Um, and, and and so I think that on the server side, not only for web, but FTP, SMTP, all these things. Um, I think that the server sides have been uh, greatly hardened and greatly improved. Uh, so it's become harder for attackers to just use exploit-based attacks or simple packet floods. And also, I think you know, again, kind of to that point, um, you know, they're they're getting better at not being uh, you know victims of compromise or information leakage. We still see at, at certain levels, like SQL injection, is very very uh, popular, but but that's not so much of an application. You know, like that's not Apache's issue. That's more uh, the underlying uh, web application. <laughs> so, in terms of what do attackers want? I mean, first and foremost, I think attackers would love to compromise and fully own a site. Um, but sometimes that really isn't possible or feasible. I'd say more feasible. And I think it's probably always possible. But um, but you know, it, it, you know, if you operate and you do something uh, you know, where you introduce a lot of fences and. And everything that it can be very very hard. This is the, it isn't like the movies, as you know. You can't just magically hack into a system. Uh, it can be very very hard, especially you know if your you know IT staff does an excellent job. So I think that you know they love to, to compromise and they love to get information like SQL injection. But if that really isn't possible or feasible, they'll still settle for doing a denial of service attack. They'll still be happy uh, to bring down the site. And, um, and and the interesting thing is that we're all vulnerable to app DDoS and, and DDoS based attacks in one form or another. Um, so it's a matter of uh, you know it can be a matter of scale, uh, but at some point we're all vulnerable. So in terms of the sources, where are these attacks coming from? Uh, I kind of break it out into four separate areas. Uh, you have uh, probably the least common would be malicious attackers. So um, uh, you know that would be like an individual or groups of hackers that are launching attacks uh, from their own resources. Um, I don't think this is quite as, as, as uh, prominent, but I'm sure you know, it certainly does happen. Uh, but the reason, uh, the, the biggest source I would say is going to be bots because it provides both a level of anonymity to the real attackers, and also it provides a massive scale. So that really, you know, gives them a lot to work with. Um, so, so doing, you know, a botnet-based approach is very valuable. Um, but there's actually two others that I like to point out too. Uh, sometimes you yourself uh, could be an unknowing uh, participant in an actual app DDoS attack. And this is, again, like the thing that really draws me to this is just the, the creativity and the just some genius uh, uh, techniques by, by, by these attackers. Um, and I include some links in the notes of this presentation, so I think you'll, you'll get a, a copy. Uh, it'll have to be the updated copy, but you'll get a, a copy and, uh, and you can look. Uh, but um, for instance, uh, there's a new web version of a low order low orbit ion cannon. Um, and what they did was they put it into an iframe. So you can just browse to a site that's you know, somehow infected, and it'll put this code into your browser. Um, and so your machine itself will not be uh, compromised. Uh, you won't be, uh, well, it's kind of pseudo control. Um, in the background, you'll be browsing, you know, typically in this attack, you'll be browsing against the victim's site um, over and over. So even though you're, you, know, you might be at, you know, um, you know, some, some news website, uh, your browser in the background is actually launching this attack, and it's not just you, it's everyone who's visiting the site, and you don't even know. But unlike a traditional botnet, your machine isn't truly controlled, it's just, you know, why you have this open. And, and finally, the fourth thing uh, can be because of uh, misconfigurations. Um, and there's also I, there's some examples, but um, you know sometimes it can happen because of mistakes in routing. Especially I've seen you know, being engineered for and you know, being carrier grade equipment uh, for networks. Uh, you know uh, operators have made mistakes in routing, and also they start sending all this traffic uh, in a direction that it isn't supposed to. But it can also happen at the application layer itself. So someone might uh, misconfigure uh, an IP address for where you know a database is supposed to be, and all of a sudden you know the, the that, that application can. Uh, trigger uh, a number of uh, 